Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today we're going to take on a project that um, I'm going to personally use. So I was contacted by a seller, uh, we've done business in the past, and he said he had a few reels that uh, he was looking to, uh, to sell off and gave me first shot at them. And there was only one in there that really interested me. I bought the lot, and uh, those would be reconditioned and, um, and put out uh, for a second chance. But this one gave me some interest. This is the Garcia 9600 uh, reel. It's a surf size reel. It holds 250 yards of 14 pound test. It's a, uh, it says ball bearings. I'm thinking that there's two in here. I'm not sure we're gonna open this up and find out. Then it's shown its wear. We have uh, a lot of accumulated salt and, and dirt on the spool. You can notice over here under the line guide that this reel hasn't been used in quite some time because there's a whole bunch of dust and dirt right where the line would go, so that would certainly knock that off. Do it here as well. So I'm thinking maybe at best the uh, the thing is just sat in a garage or, or some kind of storage unit where it's gathered that dust because the case itself is in very nice condition. There's hardly any marks on the, the paint. The label is still on the back of the reel, and the reel says made in Japan. So we're going to take this apart. I know Chris... Uh, one of our viewers uh, likes these older reels and asked me if I wouldn't mind doing one. I think he's got the 9600. And of course, we'll go do that. So I'm going to start by taking off the exterior pieces and parts. We'll start with the spool. It's got a push button that will release the spool. And inside kind of tells you a little bit different story, doesn't it, right away. There's a lot of accumulation in here. So it looks like maybe the outer, outer part's got... Um, uh, hosed off and the like after uses, but internally doesn't look like uh, it, it received that same care and attention, even though the reel is spinning freely. So when we remove this axle shaft, we'll make sure to remove all of the, the stuff that is on there as well. So let's continue with uh, removing the exterior pieces. And when I do that, I like to uh, take a moment to thank our first responders and essential personnel and everybody involved in keeping us safe during the pandemic. Uh, first aid, first responders, all the uniformed services, uh, EMTs, fire, police, you know, all, all by now they're all our local hometown heroes. And uh, everything that they do day in and day out to keep us safe and restore us to health in the medical fields and the like, thank you for everything it is you do. Well, you noticed that while I was giving my thanks that I went to turn the reel to see if I could... Uh, unscrew the handle and there was resistance there. That tells you to check the other side of the reel and to see if there's a screw in there. Particularly on the Japanese reels for some reason, there's a lot of those that have a through screw. Daiwa, Ryobi, and the like from the era. And uh, if you don't check that, because the cap wasn't moving, that's usually a telltale sign. If that cap is moving while you're spinning the reel, you know you have a, a, a screw here. But sometimes they hide them underneath that screw cap. And if you go and get a little bit aggressive thinking that, well, maybe it's just a, a tight one, you're going to break the handle off on these. So please check the other side before you, uh, you go and do too much to remove that handle. So this is Garcia now. So when you see a Garcia reel, it is after the Mitchell bankruptcy. And it's actually after the Garcia bankruptcy because this is a... a um, point in time where uh, Garcia uh, went bankrupt. That caused Mitchell to go bankrupt because they lost the volume of the distributor that they had in the U.S. And then I think Mitchell, if I remember my history and I could be wrong, I think Mitchell was sold to uh, the company that owned Browning, uh, the firearms uh, dealer, and that only lasted for a short period of time. And then uh, Garcia got resurrected post-bankruptcy. And they started making the Mitchell reels under the Garcia name without the Mitchell Garcia. So this is 1980s, uh, 90s at the, at the most. And then eventually Garcia got acquired by Abu and it became Abu Garcia. And, it, and you still have that nameplate today under the pure fishing line. So quite a uh, family history there. But this, this period is after the Mitchell Garcia. All right, three side plate screws will enable us to take that off. This reel was spinning nice and freely. Looks like we got a stuck side over here. We'll get that out. This takes a little effort. That just tells you that this reel hasn't been maintained in a while. 
There you go. So it says ball bearings on the side. That's a plural. Ball bearings. And right now I have two bushings. <laughs> Excuse the overemphasis on pronunciation there, but I got. So I'm wondering where the plural is in this. So a couple of things just happened when we were walking that side plate out. The first is that the axle shaft tie down pin, which goes on that cross wine arm, came out. There's a hole in the bottom here where that goes in. And when you remove that, you can remove the axle shafts. Remember what we said before, we're going to have to clean this up. You can see there's a lot of tarnish and grease and junk on there. Also, the bushing came out, so let's just uh, wipe that bushing down, put that right back in the case so we don't lose it. These little parts on workbenches tend to, to go off and take a little trip on their own if you don't, uh, don't watch them. That's a nice solid bushing. There's nothing wrong with bushings. Put that right back in the case, just like that. And uh, what I do, if, you, if you've noticed off camera, I have a little parts tray. It's the bottom of a plastic jug. And uh, I put all my pieces of parts in there so that as I'm cleaning other pieces and that, they don't get lost or banged around on the table or, uh, or worse, broken or, or whatever. So we've got two bushings there. We'll go move them up in a moment. This one was very tight. It's dried grease. Now, the reel itself was turning nicely. So when I got contacted for the purchase, they had three or four or five reels there. A uh, couple of old uh, spinning reels, a few uh, boat reels, Ocean City reels in particular. And uh, they had this one. And it's coming up on striped bass season. We're going to have a drop in the, in the uh, air temperature pretty soon. That'll drop the water temperature and the striped bass will be on the run in their migration south. And uh, I was looking for a reel that I could, uh, could kind of do a throwback on. Just kind of line it up and uh, kind of go back in time a little bit and this one fits the bill. It's got a nice amount of capacity. It uh, should cast nicely and uh, it's pretty simple reel in design. There's nothing fancy here versus some of those uh, designs you'll see on some of the Mitchell Garcia predecessors like the 302 or the 306. It's got a, a, a simpler approach in terms of that but this is still a nice solid uh, gear and it's now cleaned and we'll be able to relube that. And then we'll go up top. I use a fishing reel grease for my lubrication. In this case, it's pen precision reel grease. I just like them more so because it, it enables me to buy it in an unpound tub and I go through a lot of grease rather than buying those one ounce or two ounce containers. But uh, any fishing reel grease will do. Um, I get asked all the time, you know, how about real butter or how about cow's grease or how about the Shimano greases? They're, they're all good. Just go buy a a fishing reel grease that's a quote-unquote fishing reel grease. Don't use a general household grease. I also saw a comment uh, recently about uh, overpacking grease on a reel. I think that came from Bill. There's uh, an old-timers thing that said if you're going to use a reel in salt water, load the whole cavity with grease. That'll keep the salt water out. Yeah, it'll do that. And Bill was very quick to point out that even though that, that's the case, if you don't uh, take care to clean that grease out on a regular basis, you're going to be uh, dealing with a lot of dried grease and that dried grease will bog down the performance of the reel. So that's what I find. As I mentioned, it's an old-timer's trick. I guess I can be classified an old-timer by myself, but uh, it's an old-timer's trick. And the problem is, is that old-timers stop fishing at some point. The reel goes into storage, the grease dries, and then you've got a mess. All right, well, that bushing fell out of the case again. So be it. Took the 10 millimeter nut off the top. I use the deep socket ratchet to do that because there's a heavy lip here and you cannot use a traditional 10 millimeter wrench to get in there to do that. It simply won't grab it. All right, we can remove the rotor now. You'll see here we have a ramp that's going to be the bail trip ramp. And this is a good place to tell you to take pictures. I'm kind of doing this kind of from uh, memory, but there's pieces in here that come off and if you take pictures, Along the way at critical junctures, you'll remember where these pieces and parts go. So in this case, we had a, a little cap washer that went underneath the nut that holds the rotor down. And here's that trip mechanism. So this little mechanism, you'll see as we go to load the, the bale, it's going to extend outward. 
that's going to ride up on the ramp here and eventually it's going to cause this to push back and fire the bale. Now you notice that wasn't a very good snap of the bale there. And before you go crazy trying to solve bale issues, taking it all apart and opening up springs and that, do this. Get a penetrating oil, spray the seams. I'm just going to do that anyway just to clean it up. But spray the seams, work the bale back and forth a little bit like this. Now let's see if we get a little bit better snap. Yeah, we got a whole lot better snap and we didn't do anything. We just kind of got rid of the old dirt and grease and, and junk and uh, makes all the difference in the world. So that's my tip of the day, if you will. Don't, uh, don't start disassembling something just because something's sluggish. Just uh, use what you can to uh, save some time and energy and effort and, uh, and accomplish the same goal. There's some, uh, some old time kind of something stuck on here. We're going to get that off. I'm using a little bit of steel wool on that, but we're cleaning up now. We're using that, uh, that penetrating oil to get rid of that dust and dirt and stuff that we noticed when we uh, were first talking about this reel sitting for a while. And that, uh, that gummy bale is a good example of what happens when reels just sit. The, the greases and that just kind of go that way. All right, so when do you remove the bale? Well, you remove the bale when it's not functioning. So if you have a broken spring, there would be a spring under here that's a tripping mechanism, go ahead and, and take the bale off. You're going to have to to service that. But uh, during a general service, if your bale is operating properly, you do not need to remove that bale. If you want to, go ahead, uh, but take pictures as you do it. Notice the location and how those springs are oriented in there. And uh, then uh, go ahead and put it back after you do some kind of cleaning inside. But for the most part, you've only got a spring in here. As long as the spring is working, it doesn't require any maintenance. All right, enough on that rotor. Let's go over to here now. We're going to take the pinion gear and the burring out. So it's still plural. It still says burrings. I don't know. Maybe we have two on the stack here. We're going to go find out. Talking of taking pictures now. Notice the orientation. Let's use this as 12 o'clock. The ramp is set to this little piece in the, uh, in the case around 12 o'clock. Real easy, sometimes, to flip these and get them in the wrong direction. I don't think you can flip them here because I think if you go to, go to try and put the other piece in, you're going to bump. But just take a picture. It doesn't take anything. Use your cell, cell phone camera. Use a digital camera. Use, heck, go use film if you want. And uh, just note the orientation. So in this case, they made it somewhat uh, foolproof. There's a third hole here in the stud that that hole is going to go over, so we can uh, kind of safely assume that's going to work. Okay, next up, we have an anti-reverse here, and you do want to take pictures here. There's a spring that lodges against the back of this case, wraps around the screw, and has got a hook that's on the back end of this uh, anti-reverse dog. So if you took this assembly off and you didn't notice that, one of the things that's going to be difficult is kind of using your, uh, your, your power of logicking out to figure out that it's just resting here in a the case. There's no fancy connection point or anything like that to hold that spring in gear. And it may take you a while to do that. So if you're going to remove springs like this, let's say this is stuck or you need to clean out some dirt and grease behind there, Take the picture before you do that. Here's the, the reason I wanted to just spend a moment on that. If I go to pull this pinion gear out now, that's in the way. And you could, uh, get, could have a problem. So make sure you flip the override to off, pull it out of the way, and now you can remove the uh, pinion gear. Okay, well, I don't give this good design awards here. This has got a starred anti-reverse. It has the serrations in the case, which says it gets mounted from the top going down. And uh, after trying this several times, I'm pretty much convinced this just uh, needs a whole level of patience and uh, exactness that I just don't have. So, 
I'm going to call this one. I'm going to say that uh, we, we don't need to take this out at this point. So I'm not going to take this out at this point. And since it's my personal wheel, I'm the only one who can suffer the consequences of that, I guess. But here's the good news. The pinion gear is completely clean. The case is clean behind it. There's a little residual on that pinion gear. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, do this. So this is lessons learned. Sometimes you don't have to be all complete. It helps. But if you find that you're working on an older reel and you're risking damaging something like the case that uh, may or may not uh, be available, then you need to use your judgment. And in this case, I'm going to use my judgment that says let that just kind of lay there, clean up the pinion gear, and go on with this. Now, is that a full service? I, I you know, this reel hasn't been serviced in quite some time. We can see that by the dirt and the, the grease. I don't believe I'm cheating myself by not getting this pinion gear out the rest of the way so long as I can clean this pinion gear up and that's the way I'm going to leave it. Okay, so to uh, reset this then, there's a small collar that went on next. And then there's this burring we took out. Now this is one. So the only place that I think is left where a burring could be would be in the line roller if it's going to be plural burrings. I don't have the, um, the schematic to tell me that, but I'm going to guess that. All right, so now we reseat our, our burring. I've loaded that up with fishing reel oil. I'm going to put a little bit more in there. I don't mind if it leaks more than it is. I'm going to take the collar. Remember what we said about the collar, the orientation. I'm going to grab the two screws that uh, Go in that collar. And we'll reset this. So this is a nice reel overall. It's, it's nowhere near the engineering that uh, the earlier Mitchells had. But that doesn't mean that it isn't a solid, uh, well-designed reel. It is. The components are good. I'm noticing that this screw is stainless. And uh, you want stainless if you're going to be in the salt for sure. <clears throat> Some of the, um, the reels will save a couple of pennies or fractions of pennies by using um, steel screws rather than stainless. So it's always something to take note of when you're purchasing a reel. What, what do you have there? Or at least learning what you have there. You may not be able to decipher that in the, the current purchasing. All right, we're going to come back here and do this. All right, the trip lever ramp is on. Now I'm going to come over and I'll put the grease onto the pinion gear. And I still have that anti-reverse in the off position. I'm going to put a good amount of grease in here. And again, I, I use a fishing reel grease and I use an artist's brush. If you're using the artist's brush, just be a little bit careful. Every now and then you're going to find a hair comes off of it. It hasn't been frequent, but what I tend to do after I use the brush is I'll take a paper towel and wipe it off and I'll pull away from me so that if there are any loose hairs, they do come out. But that brush has been around a long time now. I haven't had that issue, so I'm going to leave it at that. All right, next up then, we're going to put the rotor back on. I like to do that before I reset the anti-reverse dog. I'm going to keep my finger on the bottom of this rotor to push out. There is some play in that. And then we'll go find that little cap washer and the nut. So if you like this kind of... Uh, video, and what I'm going to encourage you to do is to sign up for uh, a subscription to my channel. It doesn't cost anything, but if you subscribe to my channel, you'll see all the videos that I post, particularly if you hit that notification button, then anytime I post a new one, you'll be able to, uh, to look at it and see if it's one that you're interested in. I do all kinds of reels. In this case, we're working on a vintage um, Garcia reel here, but I also work on the newest stuff, and I work on older stuff than this. 
and it can be spinning, can be bait casting, can be an ocean reel, doesn't really matter, I work on all kinds. All right, so we've done a good job of cleaning and greasing the main gear, that goes in next. Now I got grease onto the shaft here, so you don't necessarily have to put grease into the bushing there. I'm gonna put a little bit of grease onto the face of the main gear where that crosswind arm is gonna slide. And then we're going to grab the shaft. Now, remember this was all dirty. I've done a little bit of an effort there in terms of cleaning it off. This part shined up nicely. That's going to be the part that's important. And what we'll do next is just a light coat of grease on this. And we'll uh, re re reinstall this one. So if you have questions on this reel or any reel in particular, and um, Maybe you're working on a reel and you're stuck on something, and maybe you can use some guidance, or, or maybe you're just uh, curious about a particular reel. Maybe you're thinking of buying it or something. Uh, leave those questions in the comment section. I do try to respond to those. And uh, if I know the answer, I'll be happy to provide it to you. If I don't, I'll try and give you some, some place to go look for it. And uh, doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be for this reel or the other. The circle goes on here. Normally, I would tell you if you're working on the ring to check the orientation, but in this case, the, the cross pin that's going to go into the axle shaft is attached to this arm. So uh, there's only one way that that piece can go. We'll grab the arm, and then we have to align the bottom here to the axle shaft. It needs to go into the axle shaft. And then you're going to see a groove below here. There's a groove in the back, right here. And uh, that's where the bottom of the pin is going to ride. If you like, you can put a little bit of grease into that channel. That pin generally does not touch the bottom of the channel, but it wouldn't hurt to put a little bit of grease in like that. That's another reason I like that artist brush is it's got a good reach to it. All right, we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to get the grease onto the outside here. It's kind of where it got stuck before when we took it off. So let's make sure that it, uh, it's got a lot of grease when we got to put it back into that bushing. And load the case on. I love a nice snap like that on a case. We'll go ahead and do the side place screws. And then we'll take you over to that, uh, that spool. But again, I, I think that this is going to do nicely. I'm going to work on striped bass, uh, use this as a surf casting reel. And I think probably load this with 17 or 20 pound test. I'm going to use monofilament. Uh, you could could use braid on it. It's not going to, going to harm this reel. The idea of braid being abrasive would, uh, wouldn't necessarily be a harm to the, the bail in wearing that down. I think this one's got a strong enough wire bail that that won't be an issue. And uh, again, I'm not sure if that's a roller bearing up top or not. I'm going to go back and check. I'm not going to make a claim either way at this point. We're going to take the handle now. This is a reversible handle. Put it on the side that you're comfortable uh, reeling with. I also got a, a question on this uh, before. We can answer that as well. How about anti-seize on these? Well, go ahead and use that if you like. You can also put a little bit of oil on there just to, to help when uh, you're in the surf. That micro sand and salt could have an effect in terms of gathering in those parts and make it more difficult for you to get it out the next time. So uh, if, uh, if you want to, you can do that. And we'll just uh, kind of load this down here. I'm still seeing a little bit of dust and dirt and neglect over the years. So what I'm going to do before I go up top there, I'm just going to grab a rod and reel cleaner. I use uh, Penn's rod and reel cleaner. It's uh, something I use. It's not an endorsement. Nobody pays me to, to tell you that, but I get asked it, so I'll tell you. Um, I'm going to grab a kitchen scrubby. I just uh, get those kitchen scrubbies in those four by six pads. And I just cut them down to size. I'm going to just use that as a cleaner, just as you would probably a pot and pan, only I'm using the rod and reel cleaner, which is a little bit of a degreaser and a little bit of a polisher all in one. And I like it because it works, that's all. You'll see how it took off that little salt there. 
Alright, that'll clean this up nicely. This is a beautiful reel. Like I said, when the, when I was contacted about purchasing these, the first thing I generally do is try and find out what the reels are. And if, if I have an interest either personally in using the reel or what the re reel resale would be, uh, you know, I'll make a judgment on that. In this case, I think the other ones will do fine in resale. And this one, we'll, we'll give it a little little time on the beach with me before uh, we decide what we'll do next. All right, well, I cleaned up beautifully. I didn't expect it to do anything but. We'll go ahead and put the side cap on. And again, if you wanted to make this a right-hand drive, well, just insert the handle from this side, screw from that side. The cap works on both sides. And this is one place where you probably want to make sure that that cap is nice and tight. I don't have a lot of hand strength there, but I will use a a, uh, pliers to make that final tight because I don't want to lose that cap in the surf. Here's your uh, your spool now. The spool underneath has got the click mechanism, this tongue. You can see it there. And uh, what's going to happen when you go into drag mode, when it starts backpedaling, this will come out and make a chirping noise. It'll flip back and forth. So you want to know that. These are like the Mitchell spools. You're going to take this spool off. You're going to hold the bottom stud and you're going to turn it in a counterclockwise manner. That's going to release the, the top here. And then underneath here you have a, a C-ring clip. Be careful with these. These are springs. They do have a tendency to shoot if you're not careful. So we'll take that out. And then you should be able to push down on the arbor. Sometimes you need an assist from the bench. That's your arbor. Make sure that's nice and clean. This is the release button. When you push the release button, it's going to compress the, uh, the load on the axle shaft. It doesn't hurt. You can put some, some penetrating oil in there. And you can work that release button to make sure that it does it uh, uh, easily. It should spring back. and then. Here's your drag stack. So we have a cap washer up top, a hard washer, a series of hard washers. I'm just going to take them out to make sure that this channel is clean. Again, if I'm going for striped bass, those things are going to be well, anywhere from a few pounds up to 30 or 40 or 50 pounds if you get one of the, uh, the old timers there. I don't expect to get that, but I expect to be in that 5 to 10 pound range. You're going to need some... some uh, some drag and uh, you want to make sure that your drags are good just don't uh, you know say okay the reel was serviced a couple of years ago I'm going to grab this the run is on let's go get them and then find out that uh, well you're kind of stuck because you're, you're out of drag power there all right here's what we got now we have three and three combination we have Two keyed washers, one eared washer, that's a retention ring, one Teflon, two hard washers. Teflon first. This has got a D to it. And I find that the best thing to do at this point, put that arbor back in, and here's your D. You have one flat side. So let's go ahead and put that back in. You can hold that down if you like. Teflon washer goes on. And the D goes on, and the first of those hard washers. This is, these are in good condition. It doesn't it doesn't look like these were hardly used. The middle one is the eared washer. It has the two points on it. They're going to go in the slots of the spool, just like that. And the last one's going to come on now. Oops, we're not quite down there. There we go. So if you have a reel that needs to be repaired and uh, you're not up for doing it yourself, uh, well, I repair reels by mail too. That, they become the subject of many of the videos that I post online here. You're basically seeing what's, uh, what's in my shop and what I work on. And uh, if, you, uh, if you have a reel that needs that service or repair and uh, you would like me to do it, then send me an email. Use the business card address for the email, the Gmail address on the back of the uh, video here. 
and I'll be happy to provide you with repair information. All right, so let's just work this C-clip in. Make sure you're in the slots, which we are. Now I can go grab that reel. Let's set this back up top here. That snapped in nicely. You can see how the button works in terms of logging it in. We'll go ahead and put that. Well, before I do that, I think I'm going to scrub that down because that'll give me a little bit of access there. There's a little bit of dirt in that little cavity there, so let's do that before we put that back on. There you go. Use the same uh, kitchen scrubby there for the outsides. All right, nicely done. There's no sense it looking terrible when you're taking it out there if it can look better. All right, now I can load this on. Tighten this down. Give it a spin. Now remember, we have this anti-reverse off because that's how we were setting that pinion gear, right? So let's go put that anti-reverse on to make sure it works. There you go. That's it. And of course the bell, it's important that it trips. Time to put some line on this one and take this one fishing. I hope you've enjoyed that. So what did we learn? We learned a couple of things here. We learned that uh, sometimes it's better to leave uh, a situation that's hard to work on alone. Uh, you need to know the severity, the risks and rewards. In this case, I was able to clean that pinion gear up without uh, totally removing it, just to, for the sake of removing it. So uh, sometimes it's best to just leave that alone. We learned a couple of things about how the mechanics of a reel with an arm work. We learned a little bit about how a handle sometimes is deceptive because if the cap isn't working, sometimes you can assume that it is a screw handle and it's not. And we learned that overall that this is a very nice reel. I think I paid a fair price for it. I know when I consider all of the reels that were purchased in the lot, that I did very well in terms of pricing. And uh, the resale of the other reels will pay for this one to go into a personal rod of mine. And uh, we'll learn a little bit more about how this performs in the surf and uh, whether it's something that I'll keep long term or something that I will pass on to somebody else to use at some point in the future. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Again, if you're a first responder, thank you. For the rest of you, uh, if you know a first responder, thank them. And uh, by all means, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. And have a great day. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.